Do you remember the Facebook outage that happened on the 4th of October 2021, which meant for nearly six hours, businesses and individuals had no access to any of the social platforms owned by Meta, which included Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. This event alone highlights why an over-reliance on social platforms for your business could be risky as a lot of businesses recorded a significant amount of losses both financially and by brand reputation. A major example is the beauty room, whose sales dropped by nearly 80% as compared to the same day the previous week, merely because they were unable to run ads, post updates or answer customers' inquiry. So that being said, is there a solution to protect yourself against a recurrence of this thing? In the nearest future that's exactly what we are going to be discussing in this video my name is tayo and i'm a sales and marketing expert in today's video i'm going to be explaining how email marketing can be an escape against the kind of crisis that occurred on the 4th of october 2021 so your business will not become the new beauty room and that means if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, you should click the subscribe button now and also the bell icon so you get notified anytime I drop a new video in the future. Since we are using email marketing as a case study today, we are going to start with the definition. So what is email marketing? According to Coursera, email marketing is when a business uses email to communicate and connect with their customer base. So I'm sure you all have an email address and once in a while you must have received emails from businesses or even individuals in your inbox. And that's exactly what we call email marketing, communicating to people via emails. Now, I know a lot of you think communication via emails is just how you know how to send emails by opening your Gmail app and then copying a, an email address, pasting it in the send box and then sending out an email or even copying other emails. How you are going to go about it is exactly what we are going to discuss shortly. So the first thing you need to do is build a segmented list. But before you segment your list, you need to have a list. You can consider it like just trying to build your follower base on Instagram or on TikTok. And that is just how you are going to be building your email list. Imagine having the email addresses of the over 20,000 people that follow you on Instagram. And then you can always reach out to them at any point in time. So there are so many ways to build a list. And the truth is every single one of them works. It depends on what you are comfortable with and, your, and what you are willing to give out. In order to build your list, depending on your kind of business and what you are trying to achieve, you can have a landing page where you are going to be giving out something for free and then in return you are going to be getting people's email addresses in fact if you have a, a lot of followers on social media you can give them something for free and then before they are able to get that particular thing you just collect their email information where you just take their, their first names their phone numbers their email addresses and a host of other information depending on what exactly you want to use it for some of the things you can give away could be a free ebook, could be a free trial, or even a free service or product. If it is valuable enough, people will not mind giving you their information to have access to it. And after you have successfully done this, you are already building your email list. And then let's talk about segmenting this list. Depending on how you have been able to gather the email list, which shows what that particular person is interested in, you are able to segment your list, especially if you sell a lot of different products or you have a suite of services. You can segment your list based on what the person is interested in or the particular landing page where they subscribed or even this level that they are on your buyer journey. This means you are going to be sending different individuals different emails that suits the purpose you are trying to achieve. Marketers and businesses who segment their list can record an ROI as high as 700%. Imagine you are able to multiply your ROI by 700%. How much would you have now? That being said, let's talk about the second thing, the use of personalization. 
Personalization is where the other information that you now gather from these people comes in, like their first name or even the names of their businesses, where you are now going to be imputing their names into your emails or your subject line to ensure that it feels like you are talking to them personally. Imagine you have your aunt in a different state sending you an email and then the aunt is able to use your nickname or even your first name. Imagine that kind of feeling. Now, try to multiply that kind of feeling across the 20,000 emails that you have in your list. I'm sure you are going to agree with me that the feeling is great. Now, personalization helps you appeal to the emotions of the person because it feels like you know them on an individual level. And then this will actually increase the open rate of your emails. Let's talk about the third point, which is placing a huge focus on the subject line. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do on your subject line, but everything you have to do is to ensure that your subject line creates a feeling that makes the reader want to open the email to see the rest of the email that you are going to send. So you can decide to leverage curiosity, urgency, or even vanity on your subject line just to make people want to read the body of the email. Personally, the best subject lines I've used are the ones that is asking the audience a question. Now, when you're asking them a question, they want the answer to the question. And most times, they open the email to get the answer to the question. So if you're a beginner, you can start by ensuring that that particular subject line you want to use, try and coin it into a question. So it is going to spark curiosity and get them to open the email. Because it is when they open the email that they can see what you have there and then that is how you can begin to make money from emails. If your subject line is great, it is possible that you are going to be able to double your open rate. And if you are able to double, to double your open rate, then it means you are able to make more money from email marketing. Moving to the fourth point, you have to use a simple layout and also a simple copy. In recent times, the best performing emails are emails that are simply text alone. Now, you have to ensure that your copy is great enough, especially if it is a sales email. I usually recommend segmenting your part, your, the body of your email into three parts, which is the intro, the pitch, and then the call to action. Now, if you have been able to craft your subject line into something that is a question, for your intro, you should be answering that question or you should be rewriting that question in a way that sparks more curiosity. And then going to the pitch is where you now talk about the major thing you want to discuss on the email. And you have to do it in such a way that it is going to be interesting. It is always better if you use storytelling. And then for the last part is the call to action. For every email you want to send, you want the reader to take a particular action. And this is something that you have to determine before you begin to write the emails. You can want to send them to watch your YouTube video or to buy a particular product or just to take up a particular action. And then you have to be able to connect the value in the pitch, which is, which is the second stage, to the action that they want to take. So you can use if and then. The if is the part that if they are interested in the value that you have told them about, if they resonate with the problem that you have discussed, then they should take this action because this action is going to help them get that value or solve that problem. Now, moving to the final point, you have to always clean your list. No matter how good you are with your copy, some people will not be interested anymore. Some people might think you are bugging them and they will not open your emails anymore. Some people might even begin to report your emails as scam. So when you begin to notice that for some emails, this particular person is not opening your mail or is not taking the action that is required, it is always better for you to cut them off because it's going to save you time, it is going to save you a lot of stress, it is going to save you a lot of money and then it is also going to ensure that you do not lose your brand value because when you continue to get emails that is dropping in spam or that people are not opening, your email delivery rate is going to continue to drop and you do not want that. So emails can be a lot of things, but if you look at the potentials in the venture, it is worth more than the stress that you might get while trying to gather the list, writing the copy, or sending out the emails. 
and the truth is you don't even have to do it all by yourself you can always get an email marketer you can always get an email copywriter to set these things up for you and ensure that you get the results that it is needed so thank you for watching this video i'll see you on the next one